There are many many devices in your house that use magnets and electromagnets and this is one of them. This is called a magnetic relay. This is a device that uses electromagnet in one circuit to switch on another circuit. The switch is over here and you can see it's, there's, a, there's an arranged solenoid with a soft iron core. If you turn on the switch, what happens is that current will go through the coil, okay, making a magnetic field, making this a magnet. This is a soft iron armature and therefore it will be attracted to the magnet. Boop, like this. You can see that here is a pivot. So if this arm moves to the right, this arm would push upwards. When this arm pushes upwards, it would push this contact over here upwards, making it contact with this thing. And now this one will contact this thing and then would allow current to flow through the secondary circuit. So the advantage of a magnetic relay is that only a small current is needed in the first circuit and it can be used to switch on or off large currents in the second circuit can be seen regularly in the starter motor of cars. The next object that uses magnetism is an electric bell. A lot of you would likely know what a fire alarm sounds like. It goes a bit like basically it's a repeating ringing sound. So this thing isn't a recorded sound. It's actually made by a hammer striking a bell repeatedly ding, 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 ding. okay it just hits it re repeatedly in this simple electric bell circuit let's look at how it works it's a little bit tough to understand sometimes so bear with me okay so you can see a circuit set up around here and there is um, an electromagnet over here where when the switch is turned on where you turn on the fire alarm brip, and this switch is turned on this thing over here becomes an electromagnet. When it becomes an electromagnet, it pulls this soft iron armature, which is this arm over here, and it pulls it towards itself in attraction. When it pulls it towards itself, this thing over here is a hammer, which will strike the bell. However, this hammer doesn't strike the bell and make it continue ringing. It only strikes it once because it attracts only one time, right? So the hammer goes towards the thing and goes dong, one time so you're wondering where is the huge annoying rigging of the fire alarm well when the hammer goes forward and hits the bell one time this part over here also moves it moves to the left and it separates itself from the contact screw now once this thing separates itself from the contact screw the current here cannot go through anymore and the current is cut off. So when the current is cut off, this is the cute thing that happens is that there is no current going through this line anymore and therefore there is no current going through the solenoid. If there is no current going through the solenoid, this thing over here stops being a magnet. When this thing over here stops being a magnet, this steel spring over here is actually pulling backwards and therefore it releases the soft iron armature, letting it sink back. And therefore, this part over here contacts again. This part over here contacts the contact screw once again. And when it contacts the contact screw once again, the current starts flowing again. When it starts flowing again, this thing again becomes an electromagnet pulling the soft iron armature out again and therefore pulling the hammer and ringing the bell one more time Dong. as you can imagine in the second time this contact screw thing also separates cutting off the current therefore the electromagnet will once again um, stop being a magnet letting the armature drop back down and so this cycle goes on and on and on the idea of current flowing, separating out, hitting the hammer, dropping back down, opening up, dropping up, back down, opening up, dropping back down. And therefore, this hammer hits the bell repeatedly. Dung, 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 dung. And that's where you get the sound for your um, fire alarm. Because the hammer hits the bell multiple times and this, this cycle occurs, let's say, 
many times in one second. Yep. So this explains um, what I just said about the electric bell. Remember that the process will repeat. Okay, and the bell will continue to ring and the hammer will continue to hit the bell as long as the switch is held in a closed position. Um, this is a third object that uses electromagnetism to work. It's called a circuit breaker. You guys should have seen this in your house. It looks like a board with a lot of black and red switches. Okay, circuit breakers are designed to open a circuit when the current exceeds a certain value. For example, you will have noticed sometimes that when lightning strikes your house or the lights turn off because the lightning went into the circuits and the cir circuit breaker senses that the current is too high and therefore breaks the contact and separates your appliances from the electrical strike or the electrical surge. This protects your appliances from breaking. Okay, so how does it open a circuit when the current exceeds a certain value? It makes use of the magnetic effect of an electric current. If the current is too high, a strong magnetic force of electromagnets will separate the contacts and break the circuit. Okay, let's look at how it does that. Here's a live wire. The current flows through this, flows through the solenoid, comes out through the pivot, okay, and uses the contacts and perhaps flows to somewhere else. The now, the current going through a live wire should be quite a manageable amount because this current is still quite low. So, this magnet is still not very strong. And this magnet is not strong enough to pull this bar out. Therefore, the current remains flowing through the contacts. However, let's say there's an electrical surge and there's lightning coming down and it hits the live wire. This current of about 1000 amperes will go up and will go through the solenoid. What do you think will happen? If, uh, such a high, if such a high current goes through a solenoid. Very obviously, this thing will become a very powerful magnet. Once this magnet becomes very powerful, it is strong enough to attract this bar over here to bend out. When it bends out, it will break this contact over here and therefore the, this giant surge of current will not go through the contact. Therefore, imagine your appliance over here. If this thing was still connected, the current will go through go into your appliance like your refrigerator or your computer and the surge of thousands of amperes of current would destroy your object. However, once this contact is broken, the current stops here and therefore your computer or your refrigerator or whatever appliance you have is saved. There's a pivot over here which also um, pushes a reset button outwards as you can see here. Doop. And therefore, the contacts will be pushed back by the reset button outside the circuit breaker box once the fault is rectified. So um, once this high current is um, not there anymore, you can press the reset button back, turning the pivot back and contacting back this part over here, therefore resuming power into your appliances. Okay, so some key concepts. A straight current carrying wire produces a circular magnetic field. The further away from the wire, the weaker the magnetic field will be. Reversing the current will reverse the direction of the magnetic field. A solenoid has a magnetic field that is similar to that of a bar magnet. The strength of a magnetic field produced by a solenoid can be increased by three things. Increasing the magnetic of the current, increasing the number of turns of solenoid, and also in inserting a soft iron core into the solenoid. Remember point number four? It is very commonly tested in SMs. And also, uh, magnetic relays, electric bells, and circuit breakers are good examples of how to use magnetic effects uh, in our daily lives. And these objects are also quite commonly tested in exams as the more complex questions.